In this one, we're going to have a look at different types of messages and different types of buses. And by the end of this, we're going to have set up a command bus to take care of part of our application. And we're also going to have a look at the architecture of our application in general as it stands and see how we can adapt it so that we can introduce a command bus and an event bus. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. So first let's tackle some of that terminology. At the moment in our application we are using a single bus and it is just a generic bus. We've not designated it as a command bus or an event bus, it is just a generic bus which can handle events or commands. So let's talk about commands and events because in order to understand command buses and event buses we'd first need to understand commands and events. A command message is one where you're telling your application to do something. This command must be handled and it must be handled by one and only one handler. An event message on the other hand is one where you're not telling your application to do something, you're telling your application that something just happened. There is no obligation for you to handle that event, it's simply information. Information that something has happened, and so you can have as many handlers as you like, which are ready to respond to that event, or indeed you could have zero handlers which are ready to respond. Let's consider buses. With our application as it stands, we can route both command messages and event messages to our one and only default bus, because Messenger is designed or has been designed to be able to act as either a command bus or an event bus. And in fact, let's go to the terminal and just remind ourselves of what we've been working with so far. So if you run the command symphony console debug colon auto wiring and then the word messenger, you'll see this. And so what we're looking at is this one here, message bus interface. We just have one bus and that is this one message bus default and we can use this message bus default to handle command messages or event messages we can use it as either a command bus or an event bus but like I say we do have the option of creating separate buses for commands and events and then we can add specific behaviors to each bus and we can do that with something called middleware that might sound a little overkill for our small project but let's not forget that the whole point of this project is to learn new stuff so let's do it first thing we need to do is take a look at our application, the current architecture, and see which are good candidates for going on a command bus or being dispatched by a command bus, and which are good candidates for an event bus. And so what I've thought of is this. We have the part where we need to create an order and save that to the database. In order for our application to work correctly, that part will need to happen synchronously and it will need to happen first before we start um, creating PDFs and dispatching emails. So what I'm thinking is we can create a command message which will handle that order, saving that to the database. And then from that save order handler, we can dispatch an event on an event bus and that can go off and then the email and the PDF can still be handled asynchronously. Okay, enough talking, let's write some code. So inside of the source folder, inside of the message folder, I'm now going to create a folder inside of there and I'm going to call that command. And inside of there, I'm going to create a message called save order. Now the fact that we're saying that this is a command does not change anything. We create this in exactly the same way. The differences are just like I explained at the beginning, a command needs to be handled, needs to have exactly one handler and the command needs to be handled. Whereas an event, you're just firing an event off and any interested party can handle it in any way they wish. Or there might not be any interested parties that want to handle an event. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked. So PHP, uh, I'm creating a PHP class and I'm just going to call this save order. And for the time being, I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is. Let's go and create a handler for that now. So inside of message handler, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a folder for handling commands. So command, and then here I'm going to create a, a handler called save order handler. Okay, 
Next I need to designate this as a message handler. Now previously I did it with attributes but I've sort of had second thoughts about this. Uh, so when we created our previous message handler we used this um, as message handler attribute. However, I've marked this project as being uh, compatible with PHP 8 but this was only introduced into Symfony in PHP 6.1 which I think will only work with PHP 8.1 and above. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that and we're going to do it old school. So uh, we'll say implements and then we'll go message handler interface. And so that will do the same thing. That will designate this save order, hand, save order handler as a message handler. And so the one thing we do need is an invoke method. So we'll create that now, and then as the loan argument, this will be our save order. And then I need to save an order. So here we're just going to pretend for the time being. So we'll say that we're saving an order to the database, and we'll just create an order ID. I'll just set that as one, two, three. And then just so that we've got some feedback and we know that this is working, we're just going to echo our order being saved. And then what we said would like to happen was that the event would then be dispatched in order to send the email and create the PDF. And so we're just saying dispatch an event message on an event bus. So we'll not get into that just yet. Let's now go over and set up separate buses, a command bus and an event bus. So over to config. And then inside of packages, we are looking for messenger.yaml. And so here we'd created our two transports just above there. And we create a key called buses. And then I'm going to have one called command bus. So command.bus. And then for the time being, I'm not going to add any options for that. I'm also going to create another one called event bus and I'll just call that event.bus. So you could call these anything really, but we're just being explicit with the names so we know what each of them are. If you are going to create more than one bus, then that means that you need to set up a default bus. So for us, I'm just going to set the default bus to the command bus. And that means that if you don't uh, specify which bus you want to use, then it will default to using the command bus which I think is a pretty good default in our case. Okay, so now if we go to our terminal and if we run uh, the debug auto wiring looking for messenger again, so symphony console debug colon auto wiring messenger, you will see that we now have two new buses. So we have one called command bus and we have one called event bus. And you'll notice that our event bus has a variable here. And so what that is telling us is that if we want to use the event bus, then when we actually inject the message bus interface, then that is how we have to name it. Otherwise, it will just use our default bus and our default bus is the command bus. So hopefully that was easy enough to understand. Fairly straightforward, I think. And you'll see that when we come to physically run this anyway. So now let's think about our transports and how we'd like this to behave. So we've created a new message there. We're not going to use this one anymore, the purchase confirmation notification. We're actually going to create a special event uh, to handle that now. But let's think about our save order command. This is something which we want to be processed synchronously because we want to make sure that that record is created in the database before we carry on. And so in order to handle things synchronously, we don't actually have to route it to a transport at all. We don't have to put it on a synchronous queue or a asynchronous queue. It will just handle, be handled synchronously i.e. when the message is dispatched, it'll be handled straight away by the message handler without us needing to do anything or route it to any particular transport, which is okay. However, what I think would be better is if we could explicitly say that we want this to be handled synchronously. And we have a tool or we have a setting which enables us to do that. And that is this one here, sync. Personally, I think it's better to use this. And so that way you can just go to your messenger.yaml file and see which 
messages are being handled on which transports without having to think, oh yeah, I set that one up as being synchronous and so that's going to be handled straight away. If you've actually got the information straight in front of you, then it just makes more sense to do it that way to me. Anyway, let's go and comment out this one. And now what we want is app message command backslash save order. And then it is a colon and then we're saying that we are sending this to the synchronous transport sync. Again, this could be called anything. We could call it foo, we could call it bar. The important bit is this. This is telling Messenger to handle this synchronously. Now we need to go back to our stock transaction controller. What I'm going to do with this order is just comment it out now because we don't need that anymore. And here, instead of dispatching a new purchase confirmation notification, we are dispatching a new save order. And for the time being, we've said that it's not taking any arguments. We've just kept it nice and simple because basically this one is about just getting us set up with a command bus, getting our architecture the way that we want it. Let's go and check on our bus. So we are using the default bus, which means that we could call this anything except event bus and then the default command bus will be used. So now I think we should be able to go over and test this and see if it's doing what we expect it to do. So I've not got Docker running anymore, so I need to start that up again. Docker compose up hyphen D. And then again, I'll start my server. So symphony server start hyphen D. Okay, so let's go and check this out. So 127.0.0.1 colon 8000, and then it is the buy endpoint. Okay, so that all happens straight away. There's our message that we put in there, order being saved. And then this bit just came from our twig template. And so that tells me that everything is working really. Let's just recap on what we've done. We've decided to rework our architecture in order to take advantage of having a separate command bus and a separate event bus. And so we've got one command here, or command message, which we've called save order. And then we have a message handler here, uh, save order handler. And so that is gonna save our order. And then this is also going to dispatch an event message on an event bus. And that's something that we're gonna have a look at in the next one. I hope you've managed to follow along. Sometimes it can be confusing when you're introduced to these things all at once. So there we've looked at command buses, we've looked at event buses, but we've also been talking about transports and asynchronous transport synchronous. So it can be quite confusing when you get introduced to it all at once, but by all means, just go through the code uh, if you've not managed to follow along with your own code, then pull the repo for this uh, recording. The um, branch you want is part seven command bus. So by all means, take a look at my code. And if you just go through it slowly, it will start to make more sense to you. And it'll start to make more sense to you as we progress through the other recordings. Let's move on and start on event buses. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.